Welcome to the sub-tutorial series. This tutorial is intended to give you a brief overview over the breadth of topics which are covered by the SEP. Keep in mind, however, that the study is so broad and diverse that it's impossible to cover all of them. In an attempt to categorize and cluster the vast content which is covered by the study, we came up with 11 topics. These are demography and population, home amenities and contributions of private households, education and qualification, work and employment, income, taxes and social security, family and social networks, attitudes, values and personality, health and care, time use and environmental behavior, integration, migration and transnationalization, and survey methodology. Let's briefly have a look at some typical items for each of these topics. Within the area of demography and population, childbirths, incidences of death and the official status of migrants are registered. Within home amenities and contributions of private household, we provide information on living conditions and housing, including the number of rooms in a dwelling, household appliances, the number of books and computers in the household, and whether the household has access to important local infrastructure such as playgrounds, schools and public transport. Starting at preschool age, we provide information about education and qualifications. This includes the type of school that is visited, grades and degrees which are obtained, vocational training, on-the-job training and retraining. For all individuals interviewed in the mode of Computer Automated Personal Interviewing or CAPI and those who have completed the Use Questionnaire, there are also standardized tests of cognitive potential. Within work and employment, we provide information on employment status, duration and type of employment, job search behavior, job changes and, of course, the current occupation. There is information on income from employment, overtime and weekend work, commuting time and many other work-related aspects. Within income, taxes and social security, there is information on participants' household income, income from dependent employment, self-employment and from other sources, such as income from rental contracts, inheritance, capital income, but also social security payments and unemployment benefits. We also provide information on wealth, debt and saving habits. Within family and social networks, we collect data on processes of family formation and other social networks, including cohabitation, marriage and registered same-sex partnerships, childbirth and childcare arrangements, but we also collect information on other social networks, such as friendship ties and networks of trusted persons. The SEP contains extensive item batteries dealing with attitudes and values, but respondents also answer questions about their political orientation and political activities such as voting behavior. There are several item batteries that measure personality, such as the Big Five, or more specific traits, such as prosociality or risk aversion. The SEP also provides rich information on individuals' physical and mental health, as well as their subjective well-being. We have information on the number and days of sick leave and hospital stays, chronic disease, an indicator of general mental health and an item for depression. We also collect information on exercise and dietary habits. There is also rich information on children's health status and their behavioral and physical development. Within time use and environmental behavior, our survey also includes detailed modules on time use and leisure activities as well as energy consumption and traffic behavior. Over the years, we have added a series of additional migration and refugee samples that have made the SEP an important source of data for migration research. The study provides information on why respondents left their home country and how they made their way to Germany. We also provide information on their process of integration into German society, such as their intention to stay, their sense of home and perceptions of discrimination. We also measure the degree of transnationalization in respondents' daily lives. For instance, we measure the share of migrants and non-Germans in respondents' social networks. In the area of survey methodology, we provide information on the process of sampling and data collection. This includes design weights, the survey mode, cross-sectional and longitudinal modular weights, as well as background information on the interviewers and many other information that provides the basis for research on survey methodology. While most of the aforementioned content is contained in the SEP questionnaires every year, there are modules on specific topics that are repeated at regular intervals of more than one year. 
This allows us to cover even more topics without burdening respondents with excessively long questionnaires. Here you can see a selection of the topics that follow a multi-annual survey rhythm. While the health module is part of the survey every second year, the personality indicators, for example, are included only every four to five years. A complete list of the modules included at intervals of more than one year is provided in our desktop companion, which can be accessed via this link. While most of the information we collect is subjective, some is objective. There is an objective measure for physical fitness, for example. This so-called grip strength test is considered an omnibus measure for physical health. A number of objective measures have been included in the SEP innovation sample over the years. If you have more interest in this, please check out the documentation on the SEP innovation sample. I hope to have given you a better idea of the many topics covered in the SEP. For more detailed information, I recommend consulting the SEP companion. There you can find an overview which shows from which questionnaires the survey items within a topic were taken, in which years they were part of the questionnaire, and you will even find their variable names. You can access the subcompanion via this link. If this has sparked your interest and you want to find out whether the information you need for your research is provided by the SEP, you might want to watch our tutorial on our data information platform, paneldata.org. Thanks for listening.